Hi guys, it's Joey, and this is my witchy vlog or experiences with the energies of the rune for this week. And the rune for this week was Pehedro or Perethro, depending on where you're getting your information from. And it's been a very unique week for me. Um, I initially felt very drawn to the the idea that this rune was a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a chancy rune. And it soon became clear to me that the idea of the rune as a dice for casting lots was more tied in with truth and destiny. And this rune that came out was actually so much more about the shamanistic side of it and the rune of fate side of it I was really quite blown away this week by this rune and the rune started off and I'm gonna bet I'm gonna point out a couple of things that are I think important from the meanings. So from the divination side of things it's often a vision questing rune, a shamanistic rune, a rune of fate and in healing and uh, magic sorry it's used for healing mental health, of finding lost things and evolving your magical ideas. The first quote that came to me at the very beginning of the week was don't waste words on people who deserve your silence sometimes the most powerful thing you can say is nothing at all. And that seemed to be the, it, I followed that advice and no more advice was needed for that situation. And then this rune started bringing out layers and layers of vision questing. It's insane. So at first I saw a reference and description of the Pegasus. And I first thought, how on earth can that be possibly connected to this rune or my path? It's, it's not Celtic in any shape or form. But then I noted at the end of the information, personification of a shaman mount. And seeing as the rune is often called the shaman rune or vision quest rune, therefore it made me sit up and take notice. I also thought perhaps it could have Celtic horse related energies. And the Pegasus was foaled by Medusa when her head was cut off, so a death life connection. And the following quote came from the Smart Witch. The symbolism varies with time. A symbol of wisdom and fame from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance. It became a symbol of poetry. And the creator of sources in which poets came to draw inspiration from the 19th century. It was a personification of water, solar, myth or shaman mount. Carl Jung and his followers have been have seen in Pegasus a profound symbolic historic in relation to the spiritual energy that allows access to the realm of the gods on Mount Olympus. Jung also believed that the muse's favourite horse Pegasus would be another important bridging symbol of our time. He saw Pegasus as a symbol of the positive instinctual force of the subconscious that signals the unification or synthesis of polarities and oppositions. Pegasus comes from the Greek word pege, geyser, or to draw forth water. The essential symbol of the feminine has long been water. Whenever Pegasus' hooves drew water, the muses would always appear. Many said that those who drank from the mysterious waters were endowed with poetic inspiration, loving expression, and heightened creativity. <clears throat> to view the elements of our life in a paradoxical manner is to draw forth, like Pegasus, a whole series of creative possibilities until a hidden unity is revealed. When we access the muses consciously on an intermediary force, we begin to mobilise our true creative work, which Robert Johnson identifies as the dimming of our egos, befriending our shadow selves, and committing to building a bridge between polarities, conflicts and oppositions in order to create solutions that go beyond compromise or quarrel. This last part was an excerpt from Angels Arin's The Nine Muses, A Mythological Path to Creativity. Now, if you're thinking, oh my god, what did you just say? <laughs> it's basically talking about 
the balance which I've been talking about in previous weeks keeps coming through balancing <clears throat> the parts of ourself the male and female parts of ourselves the shadow and light sides of ourselves the positive and negative parts of ourselves everything that needs to come into balance for us to grow as individuals and heal ourselves from past wounds water is the realm of the goddess water is the realm of healing and emotion as well and then there is something about that creative force which is within us all that ability to create rather than that ability to destroy and to take on our own creative forces and become something else, something more. The link between horse and water also reminded me vividly of the Celtic Kelpie, a shape-shifting horse water spirit commonly known as spirits of the dead. They are not benevolent creatures. Some folklore suggests they won't come unless they come to eat or are summoned, and they do devour human beings who they hate for ruining their homes. The flesh eater here, as element here could also be tied to the crow or raven. Anyone who could claim their bridal could force a Kelpie to submit to their will, although subjugation of any fey is a dangerous idea. They are able to shape shift and they can appear male or female and they often take humans for wives or, hum or husbands presumably and there again is that male female balance fluidity within the water and are often similar in theme to tales of the morrigan and here is a tale of the morrigan which ties in according to legend before one battle a beautiful mare came to Oh, I've forgotten how you pronounce it. I think it's Kukulain. God, is it Kukulain? Kukulain? Kukulan? Oh, I've completely... Oh, I'm sorry. I've had migraines all week and it's just slipped my mind completely. Claiming to be the daughter of a king, she offered him her love, but he refused. The mayor re revealed herself as Morrigan and in revenge for the slight, she attacked him in various animal forms whilst he was in battle. She tripped him as an eel in the ford, but... He he broke her ribs. As a wolf, she stampeded cattle across the ford, but he put out her eye with a slingshot sling stone. Finally, she appeared as a, as a cow at the head of the stampede, but again, he uses that sling stone and breaks her leg. After Kukulen finally defeats his foe, the Morrigan appears to him as an old mare milking a cow with the same injuries he had given her in animal form. She gives him three drinks of milk, and with each drink, he blesses her, healing her wounds. So, you know, um, there is a lot you can take from the mythos of the Morrigan and a woman's lighted and then she was shape-shifting and his advan that he rejected her advances meant that she was furious with him. And But it all sorts of resolves. So it's, it's tied into similar themes in, in horse Celtic lore. Another connection is that of the Kelech, I think that's how Kelly, Kelech, the Divine Hag, um, often thought to be Morrigan and took the form of the Nightmare, a horse of bad dreams or omens. And I did have horrid dreams before and Morrigan had told me to pay attention to my dreams this week. Okay, there's also the water connection, not unlike the Laguz things, which was water, psyche, mystery, secrets, the unknown, and had the Morrigan Sea connection, Morrigan, Morgan, Le Fay, Avalon, etc. Now I have to move on because we have changed books. We're now on Rune Journal number three. <laughs> right, so... Additionally, this day, the same day I, I went through all the horse mythos, I saw a lot of crows at very, very close quarters, and later saw this. Since crow is the keeper of sacred law, crow can bend the laws of physical universe and shapeshift. The ability is rare and unique. Few, few adepts exist in today's world, and fewer still have mastered crow's art of shapeshifting. Crow is an omen of change. Crow lives in the void and has no sense of time. The ancient chiefs tell us that Crow simultaneously sees the three fates, past, present and future. Crow merges light and darkness, seeing both inner and outer reality. Sam and Carson's medicine cards, a quote from The Conjuring of a Dark Witch. 
So altogether, the imagery of this rune and its symbolism is rich already. We have shape-shifting in multitudes, kelp, peas, crows, morrigan and her legends, uh, as well as the Kaliach nightmare horse, dark horses. In modern terms, dark horse equal equates to a surprise, the heart of this rune secret surprises, and overcoming negative expectations, to overcome a position and win, despite naysayers. There is also a strong water psyche connection, perhaps harking back to their goose, which ties has ties running throughout. Kelpies are a water horse, Pegasus has the water and the water drawn by its hooves, which drew the muses, muses to do with creativity and emotional inspiration, which is tied to water. The study by Jung suggests the symbolism is all about ego versus spirit, finding a higher path, seeking creativity and wisdom. Following which I found two pictures of witches reaching over and harvesting, one by a river on the glow of her staff by the water, another darker harvesting branches, frequently in water in my visualizations. Uh, I started to have sort of very strong psychic flashes of images which could, I wasn't sure if they were from the past, the present or the future and it kind of brought up that connection to the crow. Crow is in the void and the crow priestess invocation that resonated so strongly with me by Geldercraft and I think I noted that at the very end of last week and I will reread it. The Morrigan marked me as her own with a feather and a drop of blood. My spirit cawed and shifted, ruffled. My shadow revealed itself as wings. The night robed me in dark finery, revealing the truth of my nature. I am a crow priestess. A. M. Geldercraft. Craft. A. M. Geldercraft. And that was the very last quote from the last week, as they were coming into this week. Just sort of <laughs> there is a great big fat pigeon outside my window eating rowan berries. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Completely put off. But that, that crow thing was the very last thing from last week and it it completely foreshadowed this week. Then I kept seeing mentions of flying oil, astral projection oil everywhere and that is where the connection is. This week's rune is a shaman vision quest, the info about crow energy being fluid, the invocation as a crow priestess. Further crow raven information from the smart witch. They are totem birds of the dark goddess, uh, Bave and Morrigan specifically. In Irish mythology, the Bave, meaning crow, was a war goddess who took the form of a crow and was sometimes known as Bave Carther or Battle Crow. Often she caused fear and confusion amongst soldiers in order to move the tide of battle to her favoured side. She appeared prior to battles to foreshadow the extent of the carnage to come or predict the death of a noble person. She would sometimes let out wailing cries to foretell death. Typically these birds appear in groups of three, a sign that the Morrigan is watching or that someone is getting ready to visit. There was a few more references to Morgan Le Fay this week. The cuddly raven showed up this week. I created the Eye of Crow set, drawing on the shape-shifting vision quest energies that have been flowing through this week. And a final quote from Geldercraft, who is, she's just amazing. Spirit night, spirit flight, I seek the gift of second sight. Nightshade mugwort, wormwood yarrow, hedgewick to owl, I fly like a shadow. Geldercraft. Additionally, the new Ogham runes appeared this week. Further progression on, a my, on a, my Celtic path. New crafting materials appeared this week that I'd been waiting for to allow my creativity to grow. And... Also this week I've been suffering absolutely terribly with migraines. However, amongst the real pain of them, I keep getting flashes of future. And part of me was like, it, you know, is this a reaction to the growth of something to do with me being able to perceive and receive images and things? Or is it just, you know, pain and growth all in one go? Or is it just that, that those buzzing of um, disconnecting energy things that cause migraines or are causing flash images. 
not that anybody who is suffering from migraines should not seek medical help if they are suffering more than they usually do or more terribly than they usually do do not think that this is a way to for you know get in get more witchy get more i don't know information from the future it's it's not migraines or hell on earth when you suffer from them like me and my sister do she's had it even worse than me this week because <sighs> do you? so this week has been all about the vision quest it's been all about seeing it's all about feeling out what possible futures could be there's been all sorts of crow imagery shape-shifting crow imagery and the crystals around here by the way I mean the crow feathers should be obvious the crystals around here are ones that I would utilize within astral projection or um, shape-shifting meditations for protection for for the spiritual contact and then my spirit stone at the top and levels of protection as well it's been a weird week it's been a very interesting week, it's been a very enlightening week, there's been a, like a progression of myself, like a growth, uh, a shifting, literally. Um, I've started to become something more than I was and it's to do completely with the Morrigan, it's to do with being a crow priestess, it's to do with taking on board those energies and uh, the, with the wheel turning and the sowing coming up and the crone energies getting more and more powerful it makes a lot of sense we're going inwards we're getting to grips with our own spirituality our own selves we're healing the things which we need to heal through we are exploring the things we need to explore through and we are changing into the people who we are destined to become many blessings <laughs>